Sticks and toes can break my bones. But the market's up so. Shortness. Trades all day life. Bay hoo pow. Portfolio life. Damn. Wow. Long live the trader nerd. Man, you're a turd. <laughs> Trade junkie. <laughs> Groveling, you're crying. You're taking me down. Texas, I got Anthony. Anthony in Texas. You know, you're a really tough guy until the show's over. And then he goes in the corner and he just cries. I can't believe I had to pay the offer and sell the bid. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony from Texas. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tony. How are you guys doing? What's up, Anthony? Hey, I just want to talk about market in, in general. I've, I've been trading for, I guess, 20 years now. And um, when I started, I think the Dow was, just under 5,000, and I remember it going over 5,000, and I was just out of college, and I remember my boss, he was a trader, and he thought the market was overvalued, and, um, and of course, in the mid-90s, it proceeded to go to 10,000, and I remember Alan Greenspan saying, irrational exuberance, like it was yesterday, but I guess it's been over 15 years now where he uttered those words. Oh, yeah, that was, and, it's uh, been it's been well over 15 years, I think. Yeah, yeah. Was it 98? So, mm-hmm. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. And so I've been following you guys. I follow a lot of other people. And, and you guys you're, you guys are obviously short. And everybody else that I'm following is either short or um, worried about the market correcting. And I kind of feel like this is like the 90s again. And I'm wondering, are we at Dow 5,000? It's going to 10,000? And but now we're at Dow 17,000 and you might be going even higher because everybody is against us. And I, I love your show. I love everything you talk about with volatility, sure, sure, sure. And impo- volatility, but you never talk about sentiment. And yeah. I kind of feel like sentiment, you know, at least with your show and everything I watch is bearish. Sure. And am I, am I wrong there? And if everybody's bearish and if, aren't we just going to continue to climb this wall of worry because, we are bearish, um, and can't we just continue to march up? And doesn't just that factor in? Every once in a while, you do a poll. Where are you on Apple, or where are you on this? Everybody says one thing, and they're usually all wrong. And I kind of feel like, you know, we're not factoring that into it. We're just saying we're at all-time highs. But we could almost argue that the Dow, the S&P, has consolidated for years since 2000, and maybe we're at another leg up, and it's going to be irrational for five more years. Sure. Before it goes down. Yeah, yeah. Anthony, you you could mm-hmm. be no no question. There, you didn't say anything wrong. I mean, there's um, I've heard every argument from yeah, we're just finally normalizing after 2008 until you know everything else. The, the, the problem is, and, and first of all, we couldn't care less what what other people in the industry say because. Th- what Tasty Trade's all about it has nothing to do with you know our opinions on the market. Just make for color. It's it's all for you know it's what well, it's we real. do. It's it's real and but it's for color in the sense that in in the sense that um, it's not what the network's about. What the network's about is engaging you and really testing you with intellectual or I think intelligent theory, numbers, statistics, probabilities. It's taking your focus off of kind of what I think is really not interesting stuff like business news and fundamentals and technicals and moving you into a world of, you know, what we like to term as probabilistic outcomes. That we, you can't take away from us. The, 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 the side with the trading side to it is, hey, we're just contrarians. And if somebody says black, we say white. If we say if you say white, we say black. The, the people that you listen to, um, as well as us, th- that's a very small microcosm. That's a tiny, minuscule portion of one one hundredth of one percent of the people that are invested. You know, when you look at the real numbers right now, the amount of money being borrowed to buy stocks relative to any historical level, we've blown it out of the water. We're, we're the most leveraged we've ever been with respect to buying stocks. Well, the counter arguments can be, well, look at all these guys like Buffett and all these other guys that are sitting on tons and tons of cash. And, and I call all bullshit to that because, because just like companies were sitting on tons and tons of cash, they figured out ways to buy their own stock back at record prices. And just like everybody else is, you're going to see, I think you're going to see, you know, if, if the market was cheap at seventeen hundred or seventeen thousand, because because we had just sold off from twenty one thousand, maybe that's interesting. But you know, markets are cyclical, and and even the market at five thousand was really cyclical. 
We didn't go from 5,000 to 10,000. You know, we drifted sideways. We went up and down. We were never overextended leverage-wise. And th the resolution of every one of these kind of moves has been very different than what you discussed. I'm not saying we can't go to 35,000 of the Dow, but we're probably not going straight to 35,000. Sure, sure. It, it, it will always come back. And, and, and I don't know, I've I, I stopped fighting it. I, I guess I have capitulated. I, yeah, I try to smart. start in this. You're smart. <laughs> and I'm doing all right, but I usually I, I got out of the market in May of this year, waited for volatility to come up. When volatility came up, I started shorting vol yeah. with uh, buying the SBXY, and, and that's worked. But I had to wait three months because it kept crying. I, I just can't short it anymore. Yeah, listen, listen I, you're just, smart. You, you figured out a way to take everything you know, and you've been able to check your ego, and, and which is a really hard thing to do, and you haven't been stubborn about it. You know, for us, we don't capitulate. We, we've learned how to stay small enough that we can stay in the market. We'll, Relative we, to our accounts. Yeah, right? when, we do, when we do buy our stuff in, it doesn't mean we're going to be up money. Like, like, like when I think we get oversold, and that may not even be at a break even for me, you know, I'll take my stuff in and whatever else it is and, and then deal with that at that, you know, at that point of entry. But right now, I still think we're, you know, we're extreme to one side. And, and again, I'm not saying that, that nobody should listen to that. That's just my take. No, I agree with you. Well, uh, keep on doing it. Hopefully you're not too big because I, 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 you, you guys went around 20 years ago, but it seems like you're getting bigger. And, and if, if everybody is leaning your way, it's just like maybe you're just maybe you're bigger than you think, but I hope you're not. Maybe maybe I am in that minority and it's just the groups that I follow. And I'm not talking about CNBC. Yeah, they're always long and strong. But, um, sure. um, uh, you know, I, I, I think I, you're doing a great you, job. I yeah. hear you. We're a small, we're a, we have a small, you know, we have, we have uh, a few million people that have, have watched Tasty Trade from time to time. But um, our audience is, is still stays in the every day about 50,000 people, somewhere between 40-something and low 50-something. Check out Tasty Trade. Half of them, you know, live during the live portion of the show. Other half of them, you know, at different points of the day when they can access, you know, some of the archives or some of the sessions that we do. And um, and so so I, I just think we're we're too small to to have, you know, that kind of. We can have an impact on a specific option series, and we can have an impact on you know on on maybe a specific spread. But beyond that, you know, we're about we're about ten billion, eleven billion dollars strong, in the way I look at our user base maybe we're up to 12 billion. That's a tiny little move in the markets, pushing money around. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks for taking man. my question. Yep. Thank you Thank very you. much. Appreciate your time. Yeah. It's a great call, by the way, because, because he's totally being fair about it. Listen, I, I know what he's hears and, and I hear kind of the other side to that, you know, and, and, and I do, I, but, but we, you, we all know it's all garbage. Hmm? I mean, the both news, sides. You mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the whole reason I started off this morning by saying, you know, this article that somebody sent me about, you know, if, if you were to bet without sight unseen, what's the markets in the Ukraine done this year? You wouldn't say they're up 25 percent. Right. The same thing with lots of other markets like that. It's not, you know, don't, it's not always what you see or hear.